Imagine you are standing on a cliff. Next to you are three identical balls. You pick up the first ball and throw it directly ahead of you. Then you pick up the second ball and throw it downward at an angle. And finally, you pick up the third ball and throw it upward at an angle. You throw all balls with the same initial speed. Which ball hits the ground with the largest speed? In order to answer this, we need to use a physics concept known as conservation of energy. When each ball is thrown off the cliff, they all have the same initial energy in the form of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. When each ball hits the ground, all of its initial energy has been converted into kinetic energy, meaning all balls hit the ground with the same amount of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is proportional to the magnitude of velocity, or speed, and mass, meaning that since all balls have the same mass, they all must have the same speed when they hit the ground. Now imagine running around a running track. You run around the track two times. Is it possible for your average speed of the two laps to be twice the speed of your first lap? Surely you can, right? If you ran your first lap in some slow time T1 and your second lap in some extremely fast time T2, surely your average speed could be at least double the speed of your first lap. Your intuition tells you that this will work, but let's see what happens when we apply our variables to some equations. The speed of your first lap is equal to the distance around the track divided by t1. The speed of your second lap is equal to the distance around the track divided by t2. Your average speed of the two laps is equal to two times the distance around the track divided by t1 plus t2. 2 times the speed of your first lap is equal to 2 times the distance around the track divided by t1. We want to make your average speed equal 2 times the speed of your first lap, and substituting these equations in quickly shows that these two expressions can only be equal if t2 equals 0, which is impossible. Finally, imagine you have two dumbbells in front of you, like the ones seen here. Now, Imagine that you exert a force on one dumbbell at its centre and the other at its edge. Which dumbbell will travel further? The answer is that both dumbbells will go the same distance. The simple explanation for this is that this occurs because an object's centre of mass accelerates at the same rate no matter where the force is exerted. But let's look a little bit deeper to see why this is. A dumbbell can be modelled as a system of two masses connected by a massless bar. Now that we have our model, we can bring in Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. This equation can be rewritten for the centre of mass of the system and for the individual masses in our system. By substituting into these equations for both situations, we find that the centre of mass of both dumbbells will accelerate at a rate equivalent to the magnitude of the force over the total mass of the system. Since both dumbbells have the same acceleration, their centre of mass will travel the same distance.